What's up guys, welcome back to KZL Programming and in today's video I'll be talking to you guys about arrays or arrays, it's tomato tomato. So in this video I'm actually going to be uh, focusing too much on the concept. This is something that I like to point out in the beginning of these videos that these are not language based videos but they are concept based videos. Yes, I might have a code example based on a specific language but I won't be touching on the bits and pieces of that language i won't be explaining each and everything of that language rather i'll be focusing on the concept of what i'm explaining so in this video that concept is array so without wasting any of your time let's get straight into this So what exactly is an array? An array is a group of elements or data items of the same type. So things to know about an array is that an array, it's more like a collection of data or items. And the data or the items in an array, they are of the same data type. So if you look at what we have here in our example, we have an array that is holding uh, data types of int. So it's actually holding one, two, three, four, five elements. So one thing to know about arrays is that they contain data of same type. That's one thing. That's the that's one thing to know. And another thing about array is that arrays they consist of what we call an array length. The array length is actually a fixed number that it's declared upon your array initialization. So what the array length does is it actually gives you the capacity or actually know, lets you know how many elements you can store in your array. So in this case, we have an array that has a length of five. This is the number of elements uh, your array can store. So you have to know that your array consists of what you call uh, length. And this number, it's actually fixed. So in a point that if you declare your array, you cannot change this number somewhere in the middle of your code. So when it's declared, the number is declared. And one thing you have to know is that all the elements in your array, they are accessed by using what we call an index. An array indexed is zero based, meaning the first element of your array will have an index of zero. The second element of your array will have an, uh, an index of one and two, three, four, and so on and so on. So one thing that you have to note again is that your array is always zero indexed and it's easy here to point out that you have uh, five elements. These are your array elements. And it's easy to point out that the last element here will always have uh, an index of four in this example, because you have five and then the first one was at zero. But one thing to keep in mind is that always the minimum index of your array will always start at zero. This will always be zero. This is the minimum. Minimum and your maximum index of your array will always be the length of your array minus one remember i said that the length in your array it's a fixed number that it's declared uh, during the array initialization so in this case if we were to use this example the maximum number or the length of your array here we know that we have an array that has a length of five. This is how many elements your array can hold. So in this case, we have a five. So let's just see our length here is equal to five. And in this case, like I said, the last index of your array will always be your array length minus one. So what you do is, in this case, you have your five as your length. So this is five minus one. So which will give you four. So always just remember that the last index of your array will always be the length of your array minus one. And the first index of your array 
will always be zero because it's zero index. So in this case, if you were to access uh, the element, uh, the third element, which is 12 here. So what you do is in your code, you will reference your array name. So let's just say you have something like your array name. And using your index, you will specify the position which you want to retrieve. So in this case, we run our 12, which is at position 2. So you always say 2 and do that. And the output of this will give us 12. Same as if we wanted to uh, store the element at a certain position. This is exactly how you do it. You specify your array name and then you specify your index. Maybe let's say 3 and then you specify your value. Let's say maybe 6. And this is what will result in this way. So now let's look at the code example of this. And like I've already said, in these examples, I'll go through theory and I'll show you guys uh, a code example of the concept that we're working with. But bear in mind that these videos are not language uh, based videos. These are concept based videos. But in this video, we will actually be going uh, through our example using Java. So to simulate what we have now, just think of, uh, let's say maybe we're creating a game that needs to know how many players are involved in the game and based on the number, it needs to store the names of the players that are in the game. So now what we need to do is we actually have to get input from our user. So let's just do something like system dot out. I missed an MD dot out. Let's print, uh, let's ask for how many players are playing. And now we need to take in or we need to read our user input. So this is the part where we actually initialize or import our scanner. So let's just say import java.util. And then we initialize or we create our scanner. Scanner, let's name it SC is equal to new. Scanner system.in. And let's close that. So now we need to take in our array size. So let's just say int and we say size is equal to sc dot next int. We want that to be an integer. Oh yes, and the array size is always an integer value. Let's close that. And now we initialize our array. In our example or in our theory, we went through an array that were stored uh, integers. So in that case, that would be an array of integers. But in this case, we want an array that will store the names of players. So this is an array of uh, data type of string. So what we do is we say string and then we say players and we say new string and then we put our array size in there. We close this. So now we need to create a loop where we'll be taking in our player names based on our array size. So all we need to do is we say four and you say int i is equal to zero. I must actually be less than um, say players dot length. And then you say i plus plus. So what I could do is I, I can always say uh, instead of players dot length, I can just say size. This is the same thing. I'll still be getting the same value, but I don't think this is the uh, professional way of doing this because I actually want the size of the array. So it's much safer to do this because now if I say size and then this number or uh, yes, actually this value was some way changed here after the array was initialized. So I would actually have a different number than what was initialized on our array side. So the safest way to do this is just to say your array name and say dot length. That way you'll get the proper length of your array. So now we need to take in the values uh, or the names of the players. So we'll just say system dot out uh, print. Let's say enter 
Say a name. I plus one. Let's do that. And now we read in our input and we store them in our array. So that our array name is players. So we say players at index i is equal to our scanner dot next. And then we close that. So now, okay, I actually missed an S here. So it's players. So now what we could do is we can actually uh, display the output that we have read from the user. So we what we could do is we could say four and we say string. Let's say player in players. So if you come in from a language such as C sharp, that is your for loop. And now we need to print our player name or our player so now what we're going to do is we're going to execute this and see uh, how our code works so now here you can see it is asking me how many players are playing so for now let's just say uh, we have three players and now it's asking me to enter player name one. So we have K and then enter player name two. We have bullets and enter player name three. We have, uh, let's say Buddha. And now you can see here is the output of what we've entered. So it's the output of our array. So what happens now is in our array at index zero in our array of size or of length three at index zero we have name k at index two we have name bullet and at, sorry at index one we have name bullet and at index two we have names buddha like i said your array or the minimum index of your array will always be zero because it's zero base we always start at zero and the last or the maximum index of your array will always be the length of your array minus one so in this case, if I were to run the very same code again, but instead of printing the whole thing, I just want to print uh, a specific element at a specific index. So if I were to, to print an index, uh, an element at an index of two, I'm expecting the value of Buddha. So what I could do is I could just highlight this and just comment that out and let's print out. Let's print out. Uh, our player at index two. So I'm going to run uh, the program and enter the very same input as before. So I have three players. My first player is K. My second player is Bullet. And my third player is Buddha. So now I expect this, uh, this line here to execute and give me the player at index two. So the player at index two, you can see here, it says it's Buddha. This is because I specified here that I want the index at player two. And this is the last player that uh, I inserted in the array. You can also do things like sort when it comes to your array. But to do that, you actually have to do some extra stuff. So what you need to do is now you have to import your java.util array so now when you what you need to do is after taking in your input you need to do an array dot and then you say sort and then you specify the name of the array that you want to sort or you specify the array that you want to sort so in this case what we want to sort is our players array so even here I say players and I just close that uh, so I think it's arrays not array arrays dot sort then we sort our players so now i'm gonna enter um maybe let's say five players but before we do that let's actually do this first let's actually have an output here before sorting the array let's have an output here before sorting the array uh, 
and I want this here to say original array and let's have sorted array So what's going to happen now is it's going to ask me the size of the array and it's going to ask me the input or the names of the players and it's going to display the original array here before sorting so it's going to give me this message that says it's the original array and print out the original array before sorting and here it's going to sort the array and it's going to print this message here that's that's going to say sorted array and below that it's going to print the name of the players but that is in a sorted order so what it does is it's going to sort the names alphabetically from A to Z. So let's just run this program. So now it's asking for the name of the players. So let's just say now we have five. So we have K. We have Buddha. We have Bullet. We have Tibbs. And we have Jack. So now let's just let me expand this so now if i enter you can see here that i have the message that said original array this is the order of the array that i actually entered the data so i entered k is buddha bullet tips jack and then here it says sorted array so below here you can actually see that it started with bullet and then jack k is buddha and tips so this is the array but it's sorted alphabetically so that is pretty much it when it comes to array like i said this is not a language based video this is not a java based video the concept is the same across all languages that support the concept and the initialization in code is pretty much similar when it comes to all these programming languages so you just have to know how to initialize uh, the array in the language of your choice using the, the rules and the syntax of the language of your choice so if you guys have watched this far don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button and i'll see you guys in the next video so cheers